before find find a job in Germany. Um, I tried to find a job in Germany for about a year, mm -hmm. uh, but I had no success at all. Welcome back everyone. I'm Raul from Find a Job in Germany and I'm here today with one of our coaches who just got a job in Germany. We are very, very happy to have him here in, in, in Berlin at our office. Welcome, Gabriel. How are you doing? Thank you, Raul. It has been really nice here. Great. Everyone, uh, Gabriel is an IT uh, security specialist and we will talk about his experience um, about the onboarding with our program and also the time here in Germany. Gabriel is an IT security specialist, so um, a very exciting growing industry and market, especially here in Germany. Um, Gabriel, you live in a complete different area um, in Germany. Your office is based in, um, in Berlin. And uh, this will also be an interesting discussion how uh, the work-life culture is and how you work remotely. Before we jump into the time here in Germany and uh, about before we talk about your time at the uh, office or at work, Tell us, why did you actually um, decided to move to Germany? Yeah, so um, everything started, uh, I have a couple of friends uh, that work here in Germany since mm -hmm. five, six years ago. They are software developers and they told me about um, all this uh, growing uh, that is going on in the IT industry here in Germany. And of course, the security field is not an exception. Uh, the security field, it's uh, a never-growing field, you know, with uh, all the threats that are um, threatening the, the software system, the software security, and Germany is not an exception. Many companies want to um, secure their systems, secure their infrastructure, and it's a never-growing field uh, here in Germany, and that's, that's one of the reasons um, why I wanted to move here. But also there is the, the social cultural part, which is, uh, you know, we can say that Germany is a very stable society in terms of uh, economic growth and also the, the healthcare system. It's way a lot better than the country from which I come from. So, yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, I mean, you had worked um, for an, a very known American company in the past, um, but you were headquartered or you, your office was uh, placed also in Costa Rica, right? So you joined our program during the time in Costa Rica. How come that you uh, selected us as a partner and why did you want to join our program? Yeah, so that's a long story because before find find a job in Germany. Um, I tried to find a job in Germany for about a year, mm -hmm. uh, but I had no success at all. I had I had basically started from scratch, you know, uh, I didn't even know, I didn't even have an idea on how to write a, a CV f for, for the German uh, market. market. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it, I, I tried for about a year with no calls, no interviews, uh, nothing. Um, the only guidance I had was uh, from from the German employment agency that they have this mm -hmm. foreign office that make they it to, to yeah, Germany. make it in Germany. Yeah, it yeah. In Germany. yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I, the, the the agent basically told me just apply to any job that you find with any type of guidance. Yeah. So. I did a little bit of research, but um, yeah, very naive way. In a very naive way, I applied to to several jobs with no success, lots of rejections, no calls, no interviews. Until I find a video of uh, find a job in Germany in YouTube, and I say, oh, maybe this this should be interesting. 
And that's how I started to look at the videos, uh, hearing all the success stories from the coaches. And uh, yeah, I decided to, to apply and then you reached to me and we started the process. Okay, cool. Yeah. So as you all know, we will, um, if you're interested, schedule a call with us. You're going to have a get to know call uh, where we assess your profile, look if uh, it makes sense to work, collaborate, to work together and then have a strategy consultation where we already start you to position during the call and make sure that you match the market. Um, that is also what we have done or what we did. And then um, you join the program. How What happened after that? Um, you joined, um, we worked on your CV, and uh, can you share with the community a bit how, how was your experience? Yeah, so in a nutshell, uh, I remember we had our first contact in August of last mm -hmm. year. And just to have an idea, I had an offer in October. So it took three months to, actual, to start to get uh, actual offers. Um, You didn't have only one offer, you had actually uh, more yes. than one offer, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and also, you know, from the very beginning, when, when you start the process, you start getting bombarded with uh, interview calls or, or at least get to know calls from HR to see if you fit for the role. And um, also, we have the liberty to uh, apply to, like, uh, to pick jobs besides the ones that that uh, you helped me to to apply but yeah it's uh, i don't have any words i mean from the very first week you start to have interviews and because of the time zones i remember i had to do a lot of uh, interviews at 5 a.m 6 a.m even the calls that i the, the consulting calls i had with you yeah. were very early so that's a that's a difficult part as well that, that you need to take into account coming from a from a different time zone that a lot of the calls are going to happen in pro very early in the morning or even at 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. if it depends M most of the most of the employers are aware of that so they're not going to make you uh awake too early but um one o'clock is still yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> But yeah, they, they, they are aware of that. They are aware that you are in a different time zone, so they are going to uh, f make fit their schedule to your needs so you don't have to wake up very early. Okay. But that means also for all uh, the guys in the Americas who want to join our program, you should be very much motivated to really attend our sessions as well, to work on your CV based on our instructions. Um, Something that I want to yeah. add there, it's that I remember when we do our consultation call, um, you told me that I was one of the first security engineers to apply to the program. So. Um, Security, the security field is something that is growing and growing, and uh, you probably will have more more coaches from the security field. Yeah, so true. Yeah, that's also the case uh, by now. Um, you said you applied for a year; nothing really happened. Um, what would you say was then the key um, to get the invites? I mean. Um, Yeah, maybe you can uh, share more insights on that. Yeah, from, from my perspective, um, I would say the, the design of the curriculum, it's very important, the resume, mm -hmm. because um, that, that's a crucial point. You know, uh, German employers are going to uh, look into the details of your CV, uh, the, the structure, that, that's something that really helped. And, and I would say also that the second point will be the, the way you apply to jobs in an aggressive way, you know, 10 applications per day or um, some, some, some aggressive number there. We But always say persistency. Yeah, persistency. You have a focus on application and cloud security. You went through many interviews. At the end, you got actually more than one offer. Um, we, we talked about it. You choose wisely um, the right company. We will talk about that also in a few minutes. 
um, and in the second part of our interview, but um, as an application and cloud security uh, expert, what would you say is needed to pass the interview rounds? Uh, we're not talking now about the communication side, we just talk about what kind of skill set uh, someone needs to have. So yeah, so uh, as you know, um, security has a lot of different types of uh, right. specialties. Uh, mine was mainly focused on architecture and application security in general, so you need to have at least uh, um, in-depth knowledge of the whole uh, introduction of security into the software development lifecycle. Uh, if you have uh, some sort of developer background, that will help you a lot, mm -hmm. because some of the um, some of these steps in the, in, in the interview, one of the steps is probably a technical assessment. And that techni technical assessment will most probably include some sort of programming or a scripting type of skills. In, Which was, in your case, Python, right? Or, it could um, be either Python like, or JavaScript, yeah, okay. mainly. Mm -hmm. So I, I had some developer background that helped me a lot. Uh, also, if you are on the offensive security side of things, um, Penetration testing yes. skills will help you a lot. Mm -hmm. Ethical hacking, everything related to ethical hacking. But on the other hand, from the application security side, knowledge of um, static analysis, dynamic analysis tools, techniques, that's very important. Threat modeling skills. Um, I also had uh, some background on, on our security architecture. So if you have a knowledge of web application firewalls, mm -hmm. uh, API security, mobile security, Android security especially, or iOS security, that will help you a lot. I remember one of the assessments for one of the companies, um, they gave me uh, an APK file of one of their application and they just throw it all, throw it out, and they said, okay, do whatever you want. <laughs> this is an older version of the application. This I, was in I production many years ago, yeah. so look for vulnerabilities, do an assessment. And that was very tricky because it basically like a black box test. You, you don't have access to any documentation. You just need to hack the application without any documentation that may help you. Um, but yeah, if you have uh, if you work on the security monitoring side, that will help you a lot because security analysts are, are still needed. Besides the fact that AI is replacing a lot of the um, security analyst type of roles, but those are still needed. And um, any any type of skill related to security will help you. What about cloud, uh, um, which um, was from your experience, of course, during the interviews, mostly, are we talking about AWS, Azure, or is it uh, all the same? Yeah, in my case, I saw patterns uh, mainly focused on AWS security, probably because it's still uh, one of the most used yeah. uh, cloud providers out there. Um, but also Kubernetes, mm -hmm. container security, it's important, how to secure your containers, um, how to secure uh, the applications that you deployed in, in Kubernetes and in AWS as well. So um, if what you have... the ISO standards and... Um, yeah, ISO 27001, it's at least the basic, mm -hmm. but if you have uh, more in-depth knowledge into other ISOs, like the one for car hacking, for example, here in Germany there is a big automobile industry, and having more electronic cars, then you have to increase the security of your um, car, so... Uh, if you follow, if you are aware or have deep knowledge of those types of standards, it will help you a lot. Yeah. Okay, cool. Gabriel, thank you very much for giving us these insights about the uh, interview rounds here in Germany. Um, <clears throat> very, very interesting. And we're going to meet again in part two of our interview where we talk about the time here in Germany at your office, at uh, uh, the work, how the work-life culture is in Germany. And um, looking very much forward to our second interview. Thank you very much for your time. And I um, hope you still uh, keep enjoying Germany. Huh? Thank you, Raoul. 
If you are a software developer, also a secure specialist, uh, please contact us, get in touch with us, and we will assess your profile as well and see if we can support you. Take care, all the best.